Well, good morning, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Thanks for logging on to our latest long-range forecast update, sponsored today by Metal Magic in Washington. 698-8555 for all of your paintless tent repair needs. Give Chad a call. Tell him Southern Indiana Weather sent you, folks. Got a little bit of rain tracking our way, but not a whole lot today. Today is Veterans Day, and if you're lucky to be off, you've got a, a nice morning to deal with, not so much during the afternoon, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Taking a look at live radar here, go to southernindianaweather.com, and if you click on live radar, we can see this great interactive radar product that we've got on here, and you can see some showers moving in across the area here, but uh, as we zoom in, you can see just not a whole lot of activity here. The brunt of it is to our north. As I go ahead and put it into my radar program here, you can see this in motion along with the satellite, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be an absolutely huge deal for us today. I've only went with a 40% chance of showers. Do you think there will be some showers in the area? As the cold front passes today but it's not going to be an absolute washout and as you can see it looks pretty much like a narrow band to me at this point the bigger deal behind this folks is going to be the is going to be the temperatures if we just throw the temperatures on here can you spot the cold front here we are at about 10 a.m and we're up to near the 60 degree mark already this is a little higher than i had uh, forecasted this morning but uh, that's that's okay uh, we can see this cold front quickly moving our way and i uh, you, you can spot it very easily whenever you have uh, temperatures along the Indiana border here at 57 and one county away is 42. That's pretty strong cold front. I mean, just look at over here in, in Iowa and you can and, and you can see 32 already down to 18 in the same state, just a few counties, uh, a couple hundred miles there away. Um, yeah, cold, cold, cold. The long forecasted, long advertised cold weather. Uh, folks, it is on the way. All right. Now let's talk about timing this out today before we get into the long range. Here's that cold weather, and you can see uh, the high res NAM was a little bit off on its temperatures, by the way. It only forecasted 58 today for our high temperatures before it started tanking us uh, more, just a little bit. But uh, nonetheless, we've already surpassed that. There's the cold front moving through. You can see during the afternoon hours here by a one o'clock you can definitely see that cold front bisecting the state here and that'll continue to push through uh, the area and look how fast temperatures crash behind this system will go down into the 40s during the afternoon hours would not be surprised all to see some upper 30s uh, by the time we get into the dark evening hours and uh, it's going to be a chilly night as we head on out from there not a whole lot of rain to associate ourselves with this one uh, thankfully but temperatures behind it is going to be the biggest story here. As you can see, uh, the, this is the latest 16-day temp spread from the GFS Ensembles. It progged us at 55 today, and uh, that was a little bit off, as we can see us already pushing into the 60s, but uh, we won't get much higher than what we are right now because that cold front is very near heading towards us and our temperatures will crash this afternoon. And you can see where we go out from here, Big time temperatures differences. We, we struggle to make it into the 40s tomorrow, and then it looks like a, a good deal of days we're going to be uh, into the 30s. Finally, some relief as we start to head more towards Thanksgiving, but there are some big questions uh, in this time period as well, and some big differences between the GFS and European models, I will say, as well at this point. So don't, uh, uh, don't think that it's going to be... Uh, a pleasant cakewalk over the next couple of weeks. Uh, even these uh, mid to upper 40s here may not verify. We're, we're tweaking that as time goes by. Let's talk about this weekend. Uh, we've got the chance of uh, some accumulating snow, as I've been talking about, on Saturday night into Sunday morning. It doesn't look like a huge deal to us at this point, but we're keeping an eye on it, and we'll, we'll give you an idea of where we're at. Here's cold front that's moving through here. And uh, this is off of the GFS model. And you can see some light, uh, the light, lighter green shades here indicating that there are some moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, wouldn't lead to a whole lot of accumulation as this moves through over us, but certainly a, a little bit. The European model is in a similar uh, a similar vein and, and has that cold front moving through as well. It gives us that uh, light accumulation chances as well. Uh, here is what the... Uh, the uh, European model gives us for snow chances. And by the way, if you see this white, don't think that means you're missing out on anything. If we go down to the color bar, the white here actually indicates about a half inch of snow here with just a couple of tenths of an inch of snow in these blue shades, inch starting over here in the yellow. So this would be some light accumulations if the European model is to be believed, if the GFS model is to be believed here. It's a little bit heavier accumulations, a couple of tenths up here to the north, half inch swath here in the white and a one inch swath here in the yellow. So uh, accumulations generally look 
look like an inch or less this uh, weekend from the way things look early at this point. But uh, certainly it's something that we will keep an eye on. And if it ends up being a rain-snow mix, if we can warm up just enough, it is possible that we don't get a whole lot of it to stick. But that's something that we'll have to see at this point. It does look like we'll see some snow showers. It's looking more and more like a good bet as time goes by. But that's something that we will keep an eye on. Now behind this system, we have another big system later on this week. So uh, the system that I just showed you with those light accumulations, that's coming in Saturday night and then exiting out on Sunday uh, evening. We get another system that's progged to move in around Thursday the 20th, and, and this is going to be a bigger system. There are still some model differences. Now, I'm going to show you the European model uh, because it is hammering in on a potential winter storm for us. I will say, though, in preface this by saying the GFS does not see a winter storm. It sees uh, snow for us at this point. But, um, again, it is pretty far away. This is day 10 on my 10-day outlook, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. But it is one that we want to keep an eye on, and there are some big differences in the modeling, uh, but certainly it has my attention at this point. It's got a very active southern branch of the jet stream with it and the cold air crashing in. Starts us off here as a decent sized low pressure, and you'll see that this low starts to really strengthen rapidly. This would be the sweet spot for us, the way it's tracking to give accumulating snow for Indiana. Uh, for sure. This would be a rain event as it starts. Here's what the surface temperature, surface uh, precipitation, and uh, here's your low pressure system right here. Uh, Indiana being right over in here. Go over here and we'll take a look at temperatures at the 800 millibar, 850, 850 millibar level. This is uh, uh, temperatures at about 4,000 feet up into the atmosphere. Uh, what we're looking at here is where the freezing line is uh, into the first blue shades here. The solid red line that separates them is the freezing line, the 32 Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius freezing line. And uh, you want that to be south of you. Uh, you want to be below freezing at 850 millibars if you want snow. So what it's indicating is we start off as a rain type of an event. All right. Surface temperatures at the surface are in the uh, low to mid 30s across the area here at that time and this by the way it was for 7 a.m. in the morning on Thursday this would be for one in the afternoon you can see that low starting to strengthen just a little bit and push off to our east still got a, a heavy amount of precipitation over us by that time though take a look at this it's drawing in this low pressure this deepening low pressure is supported by an upper level low pressure and, and then really what you can see here is it is just so sucking in this cold Canadian air behind it as well and and what you have is our temperatures crashing to where it would be a start to change over to all snow um, by the afternoon hours might be a little bit of um, uh, potentially of uh, some icing concerns there in the form of sleet maybe freezing rain but it looks more like sleet potentially uh, before it changes over to snow that could be a possibility that we'll have to monitor temperatures at the surface not below freezing yet for most of us merely from about maybe Vincennes a line up to Bloomington and then northward would be below freezing the rest of us in the low 30s but certainly on our way to freezing by the time 7 p.m. that night comes uh, the low is starting to push off to the east and uh, you can see there's still a decent amount of precipitation over us we are definitely in the snow category by then according to the European and uh, as temperatures uh, and the upper levels continue to crash and we are below freezing so anything by that point would most certainly stick so uh, again uh, this is um, very preliminary this is 10 days away but it is something that we will keep an eye on very closely in the coming days as far as accumulations are concerned with this uh, you can see the the latest European model wants to bring significant snow totals this is accumulated snowfall uh, over this particular this potential winter storm and folks what you can see is you know even a bullseye at 12 inches over here over parts of Indiana now what has my attention on this uh, very uh, very clearly is because as a, as a good uh, meteorologist buddy of mine and I were talking about uh, on my Facebook page last night um, several of the major storms uh, the major ice storms that we've seen in the past have started out days in advance with heavy snow totals being advertised in the modeling and then as it came closer it turned out to be no this isn't going to be a major snowstorm this could be a decent icing event so that has my attention the past couple of runs it has been pretty decent snow totals here's the current run going back in time one run before you can see heavy snow totals there again but you can see the placement is completely different on it so again this is not something that we can say well this is set in stone it's it's gonna snow uh, we don't know that by any means but the European model is advertising it and it's advertising uh, 
just uh, enormous uh, totals on this, which definitely has my attention that this could potentially turn into an icing event. And uh, as we go back here and as we take a look and you see uh, that freezing line as it moves in and it is right around our area, we fought that all last winter long and that freezing line, we sometimes call that blowtorch uh, because the blowtorch uh, it, it just uh, torches our snow chances, uh, basically. And um, that freezing line hovering right around there, uh, that easily could be the difference between icing and snow for us. And uh, the fact that it is right in our area is concerning to us again. So uh, that's something that we'll keep an eye on in the coming 10 days. It's not something that we want to be uh, looking at at this point and say, oh, the world's going to end. We're going to have a foot of snow. Nah, I'm not ready to call that yet. Do I, do I believe the uh, European model here do I believe that this is accurate no not not at all at this point now if over the next uh, you know once we get about three and four days before the event happens and it's still advertising snow totals like this uh, then I will definitely start to give more credence to it but right now whenever you've got uh, one run this is from the uh, zero Z run last night would have been 7 p.m. the 7 a.m. run yesterday morning had this and you just see the, the heavier snow totals completely switching positions right now we can say it looks like a big event but we don't know where it's going to go and what uh, precipitation type it's going to be I don't have the GFS pulled up for you but as I said the GFS uh, actually has the heavier snow totals up here rather than for us and it gives us mostly an all rain event goes to some light snow on the order of an inch or less in the current model run so you know there's a lot of uh, model variants with this it's something that we're going to keep an eye on in coming days but what it does show us folks is that we are going to have a very up and down pattern uh, to our temperatures and, and mo a lot more downs I would say rather than ups it's going to be pretty cold uh, in the coming days by the other thing that I think we should point out here with this as well, folks, is that we should not expect this uh, to go anywhere for a while. As we take a look at our in winter indices again, taking a look at our Arctic Oscillation Index, the AO goes strongly uh, negative. And uh, by the way, you remember how cold it got on Cal Halloween? And I, I said this is just sort of a preview of things to come. Here's where the Arctic Oscillation Index went on Halloween. And, and folks, you see it barely went just down at the negative. And uh, just take a look at this, folks. It absolutely Absolutely tanks it before uh, starting to level out a little bit but it stays negative all the way here through the 21st that's a long time folks and then the other thing that indicates to me that this uh, by the way the Arctic oscillation is cold air from Canada on the move down to us that's it's available to be funneled down to us so that gives you an idea of that and then it's not going to go anywhere for a while because if we took take a look at the NAO index the North Atlantic oscillation this is a blocking pattern whenever it goes negative you get a ridge of high pressure up around Greenland and it forces the jet stream not to be able to go out to sea and move storms very quickly forces the jet stream to sort of go up the east coast uh, past Maine and then around that high pressure and back out so that what that essentially does is slows storms down uh, and, and so it uh, anything that comes through it, it takes longer for it to get through gives a uh, more of a chance for accumulating snows whenever you have a negative AO by the way because of those uh, because of that slower movement to the storms and that's exactly what you see folks uh, take a look at this we had a negative AO right around here at the time of Halloween but then now look how strongly negative it goes and uh, maybe it trends a little bit more positive but it doesn't really go positive it still goes down to the negative one phase here uh, by the time you get to this potential winter storm that's moving in folks uh, the cold weather is here to stay and it is not going anywhere for a while that is just the bottom line let's go ahead and talk about your 10-day forecast go to southernindianaweather.com click on your 10-day forecast sponsored by the smile center in Huntingburg. give them a call falling temperatures this afternoon right now again as we take a look at temperatures around the area we've warmed up really to the low 60s so that's a little bit warmer than what i was uh, forecasting here but uh but not not uh, not that much warmer i had forecasted maybe 55 for the high we're warming up a little faster than i expected with that southwest wind but uh, it doesn't matter temperatures are going to fall this afternoon once that cold front moves through folks uh, clearing skies out tonight as we go down to 31 again i've only given it a 40 percent chance of rain today it's just some shower activity uh, nothing too big with this but the shock to our system really starts 41 for your high tomorrow with a few clouds down to the 20s for our lows then take a look at this by the time thursday hits mostly sunny very cold we're only going to the mid 
30s for a high on Thursday. And you can see the mid-30s sort of takes a firm hold on us for a while. There's that disturbance that moves through, that cold front that moves through on Saturday night and to Sunday. Again, some light snow accumulations are possible. I'm only forecasting a high of 36 on Sunday uh, with some light snow possible. Again, could it be a little bit of a rain-snow mix in this? It is possible. I don't think so. I think it looks more like a just a, a snow chance to me at this point rather than rain. Um, but we'll keep an eye on it and we'll see. Again, I think some light accumulations are possible on the order of an inch or less from the way things are looking right now. But we'll keep it updated and fine-tune that in over the coming days. And you can see, folks, 30s as far as the eye can see. It just doesn't get much better, folks, with the with the AO being negative, the NAO being negative, and having a blocking pattern, folks. And I didn't even show the PNA, but it's strongly positive, indicating a dip in the jet stream over us. Um, folks, the cold weather is just going to stick around for a while. And, folks, here we go. By the time you get into the 10 day, the end of the 10 day, there's that next winter storm chance that we get with uh, a wintry mix of rain, ice, and snow, all possible, and highs only in the upper 30s at this point. Uh, the European model actually advertises much colder than this. It advertises uh, about 34, 35 ish for our high on that day. Uh, I've, I've went with sort of a blend of the European and uh, uh, GFS at this point and just set a chance of rain, ice, and snow all possible because right now it is just impossible uh, 10 days out to be able to identify what kind of the precipitation type it's going to be. But we'll keep an eye on it. Again, accumulations it is most certainly possible with this system, but again, lots can change in the 10 days, and we will keep an eye on them. All right, folks, that is it for this edition of our Long Range Update. Be sure to like us on Facebook, and if you haven't downloaded our mobile app yet, you can get it for Google Play or Android, folks. Just search for southernindianaweather.com. It's got some great resources on there for you. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite with Southern Indiana Weather. Have a great day, folks. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.